good morning to you today we will continue with the class on constitution as you know in the last class we have seen the election a removal and functions of vice president of india we have also seen to what extent it is justified to call vice president as his highness the super powers his importance in the constitution as you know is that he acts as president in the vacancy caused by the death resignation or removal or otherwise of the president until the date on which the new president enters into the office however such election as you know has to be conducted within 6 months so in other words vice president can act as president for a maximum period of 6 months continuously similarly when president is unable to discharge his duties because of illness or because of his being on tour outside india or for any other cause the vice president shall discharge the functions of president until the president resumes his duty remember if you go through the constitution however it is important to note that the constitution does not provide any mechanism to identify the president's inability to discharge his functions suppose he is on tour or he is not well or some other reason he is not available there is no mechanism to identify the absence of president unless he himself says unless he himself says i am going on tour please uh, vice president may take over or he is not well for a long period so vice president can take over this should come from him there is no machinery to identify the absence of vice president so in the absence of any specific provision it is the president's right to decide when he is unable to discharge his duties and when he should resume duty both the things it is left to him because there is no mechanism because there is no super president so he it is left to his initiative or nobody will be able to identify the absence of the president and make arrange or make the alternative arrangement for the time being there is no machinery so this is the thing we should remember secondly for example i will give, give an example in in june 1960 dr radha krishnan acted as president in the place of dr anand prasad who was on tour to ussr for about 15 days because he himself said i am going on tour so sarvabali radha dr sarvabali radha krishnan took over as president similarly dr radha krishnan again acted as president in july 1961 when dr prasad was ill so both the occasions president himself said he is not well there is no machinery the point we should remember here is not finding fault the actual position is the constitution is silent it has not created any mechanism this is number 1 now we are coming to what are the powers of the president so we have completed vice president part now we are coming to the powers of the president as i have already told you many number of times you know the president has got extensive powers executive powers diplomatic powers military powers legislative powers ordinance making powers judicial powers emergency powers and miscellaneous powers so there are eight powers vested with the president so the first one is what is known as executive powers what do you mean by executive i have already told you when we discuss article 52 53 74 75 78 etc i have already told you that executive power has not been defined however the executive power is coterminous with the powers of the legislature 
so on whatever subjects parliament is competent to make law on all the subjects executive powers will extend so and also all executive powers are vested with the president and who shall exercise these powers in accordance with the provisions of the constitution i also told you in accordance with the provisions of the constitution should be read and interpreted with reference to article 74 so and article 77 says all executive action of the union shall be expressed to be taken in the name of the president in the name of the president and also the president shall make rules for authentication of orders and the instruments made and executed by him which is expressed in his name remember similarly he is to make rules for the convenient transaction of business of government of india and also allocation of the said business among the ministers these two so remember he is to make three rules number one transaction business rules allocation of business rules and authentication of orders rules and most importantly coming back to the basics that is president appoints the prime minister and on his advice the other ministers ministers hold their office during the pressure of president and president appoints attorney general and judges of high court and supreme court governors of the state chairman members of election commission chairman and members of upsc chairman and members of finance commission chairman and members of official language commission etc in making some of the appointments in in this where i which i have mentioned in making some of these appointments he is required to consult certain dignitaries other than the minister minister is a minister is the presidential nominee so whatever minister does it is the president of india but in addition to the minister certain other dignitaries have to be consulted because for example the in appointing the chief in appointing the chief justice of india he should consult the other judges of the supreme court the other judges of the supreme court have to be consulted similarly in appointing the judges of the supreme court the president is to consult chief justices of india so in addition to the minister president is bound to consult some other dignitaries also this is you have to remember secondly president has the power to remove these dignitaries after following the procedure remember doctrine of pleasure does not apply here in removing these dignitaries the constitutional authorities president is to follow the procedure given in the constitution in the case of inferior officials other than the constitutional authorities subordinate official the constitution does not provide spoil system like usa in usa there is a system called spoil system what is spoil system the president will award the job to the person who worked for his party it was remember in usa spoil system in fact was introduced in usa by president andrew jackson 1828 president andrew jackson who became president in 1828 under the spoil system very important please note down under the spoil system getting a government job was all about his connections with the ruling party therefore the people who helped the president and his party to win the election uh, he will get the civil service position civil service position remember so under the recruitment system in usa 20 percentage of the federal service are filled in by president as a reward for party affiliations remember most important what is in india what is in usa secondly in indian constitution on the other hand makes it obligatory for the president of india to consult upsc for recruitment for upsc for recruitment and upsc is a legislative subject for the parliament in matters relating to appointments to the services he can ask information 
I have already told you, he can ask information relating to day-to-day -day administrative affairs of cabinet decision and also legislative proposals for the Prime Minister. And he can ask the Prime Minister to place a matter which was not considered by the cabinet but decided by an individual minister for consideration of the Council of Ministers. That is also possible. I have already told you. Similarly, he can appoint commissions to investigate into the conditions of scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, backward classes. He can appoint interstate council to promote central state relations and also interstate relations. And he directly administers union territories through administrators. Remember, this is the executive power of the union, executive functions of the union. Then comes military powers. Very simple. Because President is the supreme commander of all the three armed forces. He appoints naval chief, army chief and chief of air force. He can declare war and conclude peace. Of course, subject to the approval of parliament. So this is military power. Then what is diplomatic power? He represents India in international fora. All international treaties and agreements are negotiated and concluded on behalf of President of India. Remember, however, they are subject to approval of Parliament. He represents India in the international fora. He sends and receives diplomats like ambassadors and high commissioners and so on. So, this is military powers and diplomatic powers and the executive powers. Now we are coming to legislative powers. Remember, legislative powers, very important. Our constitutional arrangement, as you know, president in parliament, president in parliament. President is part of union executive, part of union parliament. I have already told you. He can summon and prorogue both the houses of parliament. He can dissolve Lok Sabha. He should summon parliament without leaving an interval of more than six months between two sessions. And he can convene joint sessions. Sorry, he can convene joint sitting of both the houses to resolve the dispute over a non-money bill and over a non-constitutional amendment bill. And remember, he can issue notification convening the joint sitting under Article 108 of the Constitution. He should also frame rules for transaction of business in the joint sitting. Important. Then similarly, if there is a dispute, very important, remember, if there is a dispute regarding disqualification of a member of parliament under Article 103 of the Constitution, then he will refer such issue to the Election Commission for their opinion. And after receipt of the opinion from the Election Commission, he shall act in accordance with such opinion given by the Election Commission. Remember, at this stage, I have already told you, he is not bound by the Cabinet advice. Yes, this is the only exception where he is not bound by the advice of the Council of Ministers. Secondly, the President nominates 12 members to Rajya Sabha from among the persons having special knowledge and practical experience in the field of literature, number one, science, number two, arts, number three, and four, social service. In Syria, remember, very important from the uh, PT point of view, in the field of literature, science, arts, and social service. He can also nominate two members from Anglo-Indian community in the Lok Sabha if they have not been adequately represented in the House. In either, this is for Lok Sabha. Nevertheless, remember, most important, this provision in Article 331 has been dispensed with through 104th Constitutional Amendment Act 2020, passed in January 2020. Very important for the examination point of view. Now, there is no reservation for the uh, Anglo-Indian community in Lok Sabha. So, this is the powers. 
then president has the power to address and send messages to the parliament he can address either house of parliament or both the houses of parliament assembled together the first session of parliament after general election to lok sabha and the first session of every new year must open with the inaugural address of the president very important i think i have already discussed this in the parliamentary procedure it corresponds to the speech from the throne as we find in britain remember on this occasion the president will give he will read out a speech prepared by council of ministers and it will throw light on the activities of the government in the past year and also the new policy which the government will be following in the ensuing year so remember the speech is prepared by the council of ministers president of india will read out the speech in the joint session and the speech will do, uh, in, uh, will be concentrating on what are what are the achievement of the uh, this party i mean party in power that is the ruling party the government in the past one year and what would be its policy in the coming year these are the two points remember it is a prepared speech by council of ministers and president of india cannot add or modify he has to because he represents the government so he is to simply say what are the achievement of the government in the past year and what is the proposed action planned by the government in the future year that's all and he has no discretion to deviate from the prepared speech secondly then the president may send his message to either house of parliament with reference to a bill pending remember on issue what issue with reference to a bill pending or otherwise not necessarily bill pending or otherwise also suppose it's a purely example so that you are able to understand suppose so, there is a uh, total uh, you know mayhem in parliament transaction is not uh, happening it happened uh, in the uh, two, two uh, six years before so no transaction happened and members are coming to the well speaker is unable to control and the session was not held continuously for two weeks in such a situation the president can send a message because he is the head of state and he is part of parliament so naturally he has a duty and he has a right to send a message to both the houses of parliament to make the members of parliament understand the seriousness of the issue so he can send a message to both the house or either house with reference to a bill pending or otherwise the house to which the message is sent shall consider the matter required by him to be taken up for consideration very important similarly he may send message notifying his intention to call joint sitting of both the houses to resolve the dispute over a non money bill or or non constitutional amendment bill this is message part now president is to lay before parliament the reports and recommendations of upsc cag finance commission national commission for scheduled caste national commission for scheduled tribe national commission for backward classes etc so this is very important secondly president appoints the pro tem speaker from among the members of the house remember there are two occasions where the president appoints the pro tem speaker number one you you know that we, we will see when we talk about the speaker speaker has a very peculiar position in the sense even though lok sabha is dissolved speaker will continue till the reconstitution of new lok sabha the moment a new lok sabha is notified speaker ceases to be the speaker then who will uh, uh, administer oath to the uh, members then the president of india will appoint the senior most elected members after in the no new lok sabha president will find out who is the senior most member that member will be appointed as pro tem speaker that pro tem speaker will be administered oath of office by president in the rashtrapati bhavan then that pro tem speaker 
will administer oath of office for about 10 to 15 members of parliament the initially then these 15 to 20 members who have been administered oath of office will administer oath of office for the rest of the members rest of the members so all the 400 the 543 members will be administered oath of office and the lok sabha is formed remember member of parliament member of lok sabha the member of parliament within bracket lok sabha he gets the salary when the election commission has announced his election when the electoral officer has provided the certificate to him declaring that he has been elected he gets his salary from that date but he can participate in lok sabha proceedings only after he takes oath so coming back this is one occasion where the protem speaker is appointed by the president of india there is another occasion where protem speaker is appointed that is when the speaker is absent so, uh, that is vacant when the speaker post is vacant when deputy speaker post is vacant when all the six members of the panel are not available nobody is there then in that occasion also president is the com is competent to appoint a protem speaker so protem speaker need not necessarily mean the protem speaker appointed after the new lok sabha is constituted the other occasion is when I, when the speaker is not there deputy speaker is not there none of the panel members are available to work as presiding officer if such a occasion comes then also president of india can appoint a protem speaker remember very important and similarly the president of india nom uh, nominates acting chairman for rajya sabha that is protem speaker here acting chairman that is chairman is acting as the president and deputy chairman is not available none of the panel members who are uh, 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 who are nominated by the chairman rajya sabha as presiding officer none of the members are available if such a occasion comes president will appoint acting chairman so president can appoint protem speaker president can appoint acting chairman so this is two things which you should remember secondly prayer there are under the constitution as you know under the constitution prayer recommendation of president is necessary for introduction of certain bills like money bill financial bill finance bill appropriation bill a bill which intends to change the name of the state territory of the state boundary of the state creation of a state bifurcation of a state or reorganization of state etc and not following the procedure very important if the government does not follow this procedure in the event of the said procedure having not followed president of india can eventually refuse to give assent to the bill so kindly understand very tricky see constitution requires that certain bills should be should get a uh, recommendation of the president of india before being introduced this is a constitutional obligation now there are occasions advertently or inadvertently certain bills may be introduced without getting the recommendation of the president contrary to the provisions of the constitution in such cases it is competent for the president of india to refuse assent on this ground that the bill which have been passed by both the houses did not get his recommendation before introduction why it is a constitution procedure has not been followed so i am not giving the assent so this is the argument for example i will tell you an example i will tell you an example in 1991 president dr r venkatraman refused to give assent to the bill which extended pensionary benefit to all mps on completion of one year for the reason that the bill did not have his recommendation at the time of introduction very simple i tell you in when the in 1991 when the lok sabha is about to be dissolved when when the uncertainty was there the government introduced a bill saying that a member of parliament is entitled for a pensionary benefit if he has completed 
वन इयर ऑफ मेंबरशिप ऑफ द लोकसभा राज्यसभा नाउ दिस इज अ मनी बिल सो इट शुड हैव बीन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड ओनली विद ऑन द रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट बट इन अ हरी इन एडवर्टेंटली मे बी आई डू नॉट वांट टू अट्रिब्यूट एनी मोटिव इन एडवर्टेंटली द बिल हैज बीन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड and passed by both the houses of parliament it was sent to mr dr vangatraman for his assent he refused simply because the government has not followed the constitutional requirement now i will tell you otherwise secondly now example only this is imaginary suppose president of india has given the assent nobody can ask him that you have not given the recommendation for introduction but you have given the assent if he has given the assent that means the recommendation is implied but he has not given the assent so these two things you should remember as far as president of india is concerned that is the any bill which requires his recommendation before introduction it the recommendation is mandatory and without such a recommendation the president of india is fully competent to deny his assent to the bill even though the bill has been passed by both the houses of parliament thank you we will continue in the next class thank you very much